Today is Tuesday, the 2nd of January. The time in 30 seconds, 1.02 a.m. Baseball superstar Roberto Clemente of the Pittsburgh Pirates is dead at the age of 38. Clemente and four other persons were on their way to Nicaragua with a cargo of relief supplies for earthquake victims. The four-engine plane crashed into the ocean shortly after takeoff from San Juan, Puerto Rico. NBC Newsman Richard Wagner reports. He was loved and respected by the people of Pittsburgh, who called him simply the Great One. One of the highlights of the 38-year-old Clemente's 18-year baseball career came in 1972 before his fans when he joined the coveted circle of baseball players with 3,000 hits. I remember one of the losses that I feel, and I think it's tragic in, a, in another sense, is the fact that I don't think anybody really had an appreciation of Roberto Clemente who had a sense of humor, who was an easy man to, to be with in our clubhouse. He was a comfortable man. Uh, uh, I know he's had his differences with the, with the media at times, but we, we had so much fun with Roberto, and that's a side of him that, that is, unfortunately, nobody in Pittsburgh knows. Very few people in Pittsburgh know. That's a, that's a sad thing, because he was, he was the greatest guy you could imagine, and, and it's, it's so hard for some people to understand that. Uh, in the clubhouse, he was, he was one of the guys, and that's, that's a heck of a thing to say about a superstar. Well, uh, Bob, I'll tell you, I, I remember him as one of the most compassionate ball players uh, and individuals I've ever met in my entire life. And, a guy that I'll never forget. Uh, he's the kind of guy that just knew how to relate to people in general, whether it be a rookie coming up or a man off the street or a, a superstar of his caliber, whoever it might be, just knew how to relate to people. I got to admire him for that, uh, the kind of guy that just got along with anybody and and uh, a fellow that I'll never forget as long as I live. And, and uh, I'm sure that a lot of Pittsburgh people will, will never forget him either. Most Americans will remember Roberto Clemente as the guy who hit a lot of home runs. But in his homeland of Puerto Rico, where he planned to build a sports city for underprivileged children, he will be mourned as a national hero. When we continue the story of war and peace around the world today. After a while, most mattresses lose their original comfort. either get too hard and lumpy or too soft and squishy. And sometimes you just can't face going another round. So, Heirloom suggests you take the day's aches and pains and lose them at night on a Super Featherbed Futura. It has a surface made up of 10 individual pillows, each filled with fluffy, resilient Dacron 888 to cradle you in softness. For lasting support, a strong Holland-made inner spring, plus box springs tied eight ways. Together, the softest, most resilient sleeping surface, plus all the support you need. If it hurts you to sleep, a handcrafted heirloom super feather bed Futura could make all the difference. See the yellow pages for the heirloom dealer nearest you. The New Year's Day ceasefire in Vietnam is over, and for all sides, it's war as usual today. American bombers went back to work, but are staying away from the North on President Nixon's orders. A peace settlement will be approached from two sides today. In Paris, preliminary talks are underway. They will prepare the stage for the January 8th secret talks by Henry Kissinger. And in Washington, D.C., House Democrats will caucus to prepare for the opening of the 93rd Congress tomorrow. Possible anti-war legislation is being planned. And while a lot of people in Paris and Washington are talking about the war, a group of Americans who just got back from the war zone did some talking in New York. NBC Newsman Bob Teague reports. On their return to New York from North Vietnam, the four anti-war activists virtually confirmed Hanoi's version of recent American bombing raids. Clergyman Michael Allen, associate dean of the Yale Divinity School, told of seeing Vietnamese women and children among those killed by the bombs. And I remember uh, seeing an old woman uh, crouching by uh, a bomb there, looking away at bricks and chanting out, my son, my son, where are you, where are you? And just went on and on and on. And it, it just it broke me up entirely. And then <clears throat> a few minutes later, uh, I came around a bend and there was a family 
stretched out on the ground, a mother and a father and a couple of kids. Dead. Joan Baez, the folk singer, told of a brief visit with American POWs in North Vietnam and their reaction to the bombing. The, the POW camp that we visited was one that was not the Hilton uh, run in the middle of town, but was outside of town. And we met with, as uh, Alfred said, about 13 prisoners. And they were completely shocked. And what I was just mentioning was the irony of having the pilots say to us, well, what's going on? I mean, I don't understand what's happening because their roofs had caved in and they were trying to build themselves somewhere to hide out in their own, their own bunk rooms. When questioned about the possibility of having been used by the North Vietnamese, Miss Baez answered, so what? If they used us in an effort to help end the war, I'm glad. Bob Teague, NBC News, New York. That group has just returned from Hanoi, and it includes Columbia University law professor Telford Taylor, Vietnam veteran Barry Romo, folk singer Joan Baez, and the Reverend Michael Allen of the Yale Divinity School. In Northern Ireland, the first killing of the new year has taken place. A carload of Rolls-Royce factory workers was machine gunned. One of the Catholic workers died. Three others were wounded. Across the border in the Irish Republic, a young Catholic couple engaged to be married were kidnapped from a dance and shot to death. And in Belfast, 25-year-old Elizabeth McKee has been arrested. She's a high-ranking officer of the outlawed Irish Republican Army. She's also the first woman held without trial under the anti-guerrilla laws. When we continue, the cost of being poor goes down and LA temperatures go up. Southern California, it's a great place. It's a vast place. That's why we produce over 800 local programs every year to serve the needs of 12 million viewers in over 150 communities. Programs of social interest like women's lib, welfare, ecology, and consumerism. Ethnic specials, as well as weekly shows exploring the problems and issues of our minority communities. Children's programs, sports, religion, education, the arts city and government affairs. All in all, a balanced schedule of programming. That's why when we say we're serving Southern California, we mean it. Happy New Year from all the people at Channel 4. Hello, Ed McMahon to talk about tourism. Southern California has everything a person could want in a vacation, but the message has to be told to prospective travelers. The Southern California Visitors Council advertises and promotes Southern California to woo those people and their dollars to come here. Dollars create jobs, lots of jobs. Last year, says the Visitors Council, visitors spent $1.3 billion in Southern California, and that created and supported 800,000 jobs. People do not come to Southern California automatically. They have to be told about the man-made attractions and the natural wonders, so they choose Southern California for a vacation destination. The Visitors Council celebrates its golden anniversary this year, 50 years of reaching the people and making them select Southern California. It's going to cost less to be officially poor this year. The Labor Department announced it will raise the guidelines it uses to determine if someone is poor. The exact figures haven't been given yet. 60 miles per hour winds lashed parts of Los Angeles yesterday. This is La Crescenta. Cleanup crews from the cities, the county, and the state are still busy picking up debris and rocks from roads. More billboards and trees were shoved over. It's going to be windy again today, but it won't be as bad as yesterday, and by tomorrow, the winds are expected to die down. The overnight low was 45. The days are going to get warmer. Today, the high will be 72, and tomorrow, it will be 76. Comedian Imogene Coca is in a New York hospital today after an automobile accident. She's listed in fair condition and will undergo eye surgery. 
And here in Los Angeles, actor Edward G. Robinson is in the hospital. He's listed in satisfactory condition after entering Mount Sinai Hospital for a series of tests. Robinson is 79 years old. The Census Bureau says as of today, there are 210,194,312 people in the United States. Most of us manage to stay out of trouble while celebrating the new year, but not all. In Fort Lauderdale, Florida, more than 70 persons were hurt and 44 arrested in a battle between police and party goers. And in Pasadena, a bellflower man was stabbed to death after an argument at the Rose Bowl parade. For those of you who missed the Rose Parade or for those who'd like one last glimpse, here are a few scenes. The theme of the parade was movie memories and a lot of uh, big stars showed up. All the good seats were taken long before the float started rolling down the streets, but latecomers did the best they could. There were 59 floats in the parade. The governor's trophy went to Florist Trans World Delivery. John Wayne was Grand Marshal. The theme prize went to a float sponsored by the Association of Motion Picture and Television Producers. prize winner was sponsored by Occidental Life Insurance, depicting an old-time Hollywood premiere. Mrs. Pat Nixon was an honored guest. The USC is her alma mater. The big prize, the sweepstakes trophy, was won by the city of Lakewood for its entry called Kismet. Excuse me, does your margarine taste like butter? Well, not really. Then watch. Mazzola margarine tastes more like butter because Mazzola has a special way of getting good natural flavor from butter itself. Like that. Hmm. Do other margarines do that? No, only Mazzola. Does Mazzola take anything else from butter? No, just flavor. Mazzola gets goodness from golden corn oil. Now that makes sense. Flavor from butter, goodness from corn oil. I suppose depending on whether you're a native Californian or not, you call them Santa Ana winds or Santana winds, but anyway, they were blowing plenty hard today. About 80 miles an hour, they tell me, and they ripped through Southern California, uh, California, destroying several boats, mobile homes, knocking out power to some residences, and blowing up dust storms in parts of the San Gabriel Valley. The Weather Bureau says the strong winds are expected through midday tomorrow. Well, we'll get the word from George Fishbeck in a minute. The heaviest hit by the winds was the Avalon Harbor at Catalina, where wind gusts churned up to 10-foot waves that ripped along the beachfront, causing more than $100,000 in damage. And now, as I promised you, the word from George Fishbeck on how long the winds will last and exactly what that airplane is doing in the middle, the middle of your weather board. <laughs> One thing, Barney, you and I won't get into is Santa Ana or Santana, but the, the, uh, the uh, National Weather Service uh, calls it Santa Ana, and since this is who I represent, uh, that's why I'll stick. But anybody can use anything they want to. Feel free. Now, about this airplane over here, I was afraid no one was going to ask. Uh, we've had three airplane stories this, uh, today uh, dealing with the turbulence, extreme turbulence. And <clears throat> one went over uh, uh, Laguna Mountains where the fellow had, had 1,500 foot per minute uh, up and down draft. And he said his stomach was always 1,000 feet either above or below him. But uh, I just came from the weather station, and they told about a case in the Imperial Valley where the fellow was in a downdraft at 500 feet uh, per minute, and he said, I had full power on trying to go up. And he was going down at this speed. So we had quite, quite some turbulence, and here's the reason for it. The reason is the, is the same one that caused this, this basic Santa Ana condition. We have a high-pressure system over Nevada, low-pressure system over Arizona, the highs go clockwise, 
the lows go counterclockwise, and where they, the, they meet in this general area, you get a spin-off of winds coming out in this direction over the ridges, through the canyons, and uh, down through uh, the, the basin. Uh, but now that we know what caused it, let's see how long it's going to stay that way. This is the situation that, that existed today, the highs here and the low down here. And any time you have a situation like that, all you have to do is move a few of the variables. This high is moved from here to here. The low is moved from here to here. And as a result, these conditions no longer exist. We can expect a few winds tomorrow, a few uh, 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 localized winds, nothing general as today, but in, we, can, uh, we can expect them in the, in the canyons. Barometer is now 30.06 and rising, and uh, the winds will be north to northeast, uh, 40 to 50 miles an hour. There'll be stronger gusts, you know, just below those canyons, and it's going to be localized. It can be, uh, uh, there'll be a little cooler weather uh, in the wind-protected uh, pockets. Uh, slightly warmer on Tuesday and Wednesday in most areas. John? Very good, Doctor. Thank you so much. Southern California has certainly gotten off to a cold and windy start, 1973. You might think you'd have to be a polar bear or a penguin to brave the chilly waters along the beaches today, but some human penguins took the plunge. Anyway, very early this morning, into the 56 degree surf as part of the Penguin Swim Club's annual New Year's dip. The sound of the siren, they were off. The whole point of this chilly exercise is to paddle out to a marker buoy 140 yards off the coastline and back to shore. There is a reward for this kind oh, of activity. What's it like out there? Cold enough for you? Stimulating. <laughs> <laughs> what made you do it? Oh, I wanted to start the new year outright. <laughs> this is the best way to do it, the water. Is this your first time with the Penguin Club going out? Yes, it is. I read about it in American Park News. I'm a director and I thought, well, I should do it once. <laughs> <laughs> you look cold. Are you as cold as you look? No, I'm pretty warm. We sent Stu Nahan down to the Penguin Club today, <laughs> but there was talk of a shipping danger and also the possibility of a gray hair. <laughs> if you get the 11th annual sweepstakes letter from Reader's Digest, it's your chance to join half a million past Reader's Digest sweepstakes winners. The possibility is usually so remote, but a delightful surprise. It will bring continued joy and happiness to my family. Watch for your sweepstakes letter from Reader's Digest. It's your chance to join half a million winners. Half a million winners. All right, let's go. He's the one you have. Hey, hey, hey. Drive, 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 drive. You guys ought to be in better shape by now. Look at me. I got 20 years on every one of you. Even if you're in great shape, hard work in cold weather can make your muscles ache. So rub in Ben Gay. Ben Gay's warmth sort of bakes the ache. Ben Gay, when you're hurt, it helps. A message to all American Indians from famous American Indian ballerina Yvonne Choteau. These are forms of skilled expression in the world of the creative and performing arts. As a descendant of the Shawnee and Cherokee tribes, I am truly proud of our many American Indians whose artistic efforts have found fulfillment. There are many opportunities for American Indians to use their creative skills in the service of all Americans. For a free booklet, write to American Indian, Box 6558, Washington, D.C., 20009.